My relationship with Rabbi Greenblatt was what can be depicted as an ideal friendship. He called me Dov, and I called him Matis. Albeit we could have tremendous amount of differences of opinion, but there was respect for the opinion of the other person. You could, uh, he exuded respect. Uh, I would say he was the ideal rationalist because many a time you would tell a person, uh, I have a difficulty understanding this and this. Our background being Orthodox Jews and tremendous differential respect for our sages throughout the ages, many a time you would say, well, so-and-so says it. Well, if so-and-so says it, why should I ask? Why should I know? What difference does it make? We accept the authority of that sage. He was, a first, of course, he was very differential, but at the same time, since he was the ideal rationalist, he didn't stop at that. But still, I still want to know the reason. And, he, and that, that, that was something which I thought was a very unique part of his personality. In the yeshiva, when people study together, there's a great deal of shouting and a lot of vociferous actions. People get overheated. I'm right the way I understand the Talmud. You don't know what you're talking about. That kind of talk. I don't believe that this took place in our discussions. We, we had different opinions many a time, but I, 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 I deeply admired what I felt was he, he was always like, well, but what's the truth? Uh, we were in the dorm together. We shared a dorm room with two other fellas. I think it was 704, with the number of the dorm room. And there was a time in the yeshiva when the yeshiva didn't have money and they didn't serve eggs for breakfast. One day we were walking past the pet shop and we saw that they would be, we, they, 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 some of the pets were for sale. So we came in and we bought tiny little chicks and we took them to our dorm room and we put them in a cardboard box. We didn't know much about, I think we took some food along for them. Uh, when we got up the next morning, there was filth all over the floor. But I remember like how to, how, how that there was something was very special. Incidentally, we were not worthy of having eggs from these chicks. I don't remember how or why, but we gave them back to the pet shop. Uh, he did not refund our money, though. There was one thing was for sure. We enjoyed each other's company. And what I remember, so over, over the years, we had many, many theological discussions. And we had diverse views. We didn't, but again and again, we respected what the other person said. Yes. May I say one thing that they said about Matis? He had a job, a nine to five job, eight to four job, but he learned more. People were in the cola learning all day. He would get up at five, learn until he left for work, and when he came back from work, again, many hours. You, so you've reminded in spite me. of the fact that he was not in cola, but rather had a job, he learned as much as some of the people. Kola means a person who's totally devoted to studying Torah. Of course, this was, it was just, we were so close, but I should have mentioned this, of course. The very fact that he had a, he had a nine to five job. He was incidentally a very bright person. Besides, besides the fact that he was scholarly, a person can be scholarly and not necessarily bright. He was unusually bright. And he had this job, which he did, and I understand that he was so successful that before you knew it, he was in charge of a lot of people. I remember the study of the Jerusalem Talmud. It's something recently, thanks to Art Scroll, this has become something that many people have undertaken to learn. 
but there was a time when the very few scholars learned the Jerusalem Talmud and he decided he's going to learn it and he completed it on his own and knew it. So there were many things that he studied and he learned in time, mind you, as if he would be in the Kolo and he accomplished much, much more than the average person. He and his wife introduced me to my wife. So no, notice I didn't say although. <laughs> I am saying that I'm grateful to him because this is, you can see he was a man of truth. He didn't fool me in any way. Somehow I feel that we had the same sense of values. There are diverse opinions among Orthodox Jews about the study of secular knowledge. We both agreed, certainly he would, would want his children to have secular knowledge, but what was his great desire, I feel, was that his children should be Torah scholars and that they should have positive attributes, attributes that we think very highly of, that the Torah feels are, comm are commendable. Uh, mercy, kindness, compassion, these are positive attributes. So I believe we both share that, that when it came to that, uh, our children should be that way. Truth is, is an attribute that we always need. In fact, the redemption there are many sources that the redemption and truth are synonymous. So now that his soul is up above, we need, we need this kind of messenger that it's time, it's time for the redemption. So as we usually say at the end of a eulogy, he should be a Melitz Yosha for his family and for all of uh, all of Klaus and all of mankind.